Hello and welcome to today's lecture about lithium batteries. Like always you find the content of this lecture also in the book Energiespeicher, Bedarf, Technologien und Integration that I have published together with my colleague Michael Sterner and especially the section on battery technologies has been written together with a team from Hoppeke Batterien. Unfortunately at the moment it is only available in German language but here you already see the cover of the English edition that hopefully will appear in the next week or at least next month. Coming to lithium batteries and we start with an overview and the history of lithium batteries. Different to other battery technologies, the lithium batteries use a range of different cell chemistries. And during discharge, the negative electrode functions as a function of lithium ions and positive electrode as a sink for the lithium ions. The electrolyte separates the transport of lithium ions from the transport of the electrons. If metallic lithium is used for the negative electrode, then the cell voltage results from the difference between the electrochemical potential of the positive electrode and the lithium. The lithium ions resulting from the reaction of lithium towards the lithium ion and the electron are transported through the electrolyte to the positive electrode. The electrons flow through the exterior power circuit to supply electric energy to any appliances. Lithium batteries fall into two categories. The one is the metallic lithium systems and the other one are the more famous ones nowadays, the lithium ion systems. Your lithium ions can be embedded in the positive and negative electrode materials. Lithium batteries first appeared in the early 1970s, since then a wide range of different electrode materials have been developed and tested. Early research focused primarily on lithium metal system, that was lithium CF, and then later lithium I2 as well as then the lithium with manganese was popular for consumer application and then lithium silver vanadium that was used for medical applications for example in implanted defibrillators. Research on rechargeable lithium batteries started in the early 1970s too. One solution is a system that uses lithium aluminium compound as the material for the negative electrode and iron sulfate or vanadium oxide as the material for the positive electrode. At practically the same time research began on the intercalation of electrochemically active materials in electrically conductive host materials such as tantalum sulfate, titanium sulfate seem to hold the most promise the crystal structure of this material forms in layers allowing the lithium ions to easily embed it themselves in the free space between the layers. And similar compounds such as using molybdane, lithium vanadium or lithium with chrome also had been developed. After John B. Goodenough demonstrated that the compound lithium cobalt oxide should could be used as an electrochemically active material in the positive electrode, it was Sony who achieved a major breakthrough in the early 1990s. By combining a lithium cobalt dioxide electrode with a negative electrode containing carbon, for the first time rechargeable lithium ion cells could be produced and marketed on a large scale. Since then millions of these batteries have been produced for portable consumer electronics applications, for example computers, mobile phones and cameras. Using lithium cobalt dioxide instead of titanium sulfate resulted in significantly higher cell voltages. A significant advantage of negative electrodes containing carbon is that unlike metallic lithium, they do not form dendrites with metal separation. In large format lithium ion cells, newer materials have been developed for the positive electrode. And typical examples are transition metal oxide 
using combinations of lithium, nickel, manganese, cobalt in a variety of stoichiometries. Extensive further research on lithium ion cell chemistry is still required and it remains a focus of current research and development. It can be expected that new materials will be developed in particular for the electrodes and electrolyte. Coming to the operation principle, the chemical reactions and active materials, <clears throat> energy storage in rechargeable lithium ion cells based on the reversible insertion and removal of lithium ions in active materials by electrochemical redox reactions. The insertion of lithium ions in the host grid is called intercalation. The active materials are also called intercalation compounds and the electrodes intercalation electrodes. The term insertion is also sometimes used in this context. Lithium ions with a radius of about 0.068 nanometers can easily be intercalated in certain structures. This is the case with graphite, for example, where the layers are separated by a distance of 3.35 nanometers. The active material is reduced or oxidized when the lithium ions are intercalated or deintercalated. Here we see the operating principle of a lithium ion cell. And here the positive and negative electrodes are connected by an ion conducting electrolyte. A separator serves as an electrical insulator, preventing direct contact between the two electrodes to prevent electrical short circuit. During charging and discharging, the electrochemical reactions occur at the electrode materials, for example the transition metal oxide, lithium metal oxide and the Me stands then for example for cobalt, manganese, nickel, electrolyte and then the graphite C6. <clears throat> Looking at the charging, the positive electrode active material is oxidized, raising the transition metal's oxidation number by 1 from Me3 to Me4 and releasing an electron into the external circuit. Lithium ions are deintercalated from the host grid and released into the electrolyte where they are transported to the negative electrode. Reduction occurs at the negative electrode. Lithium ions are transferred from the electrolyte to the active material for example, in this example, it's the graphite and intercalated there. Electrons flow through the external circuit to the negative electrode, resulting in a charge neutrality. And here we see the chemical reactions on the positive electrode and the negative electrode. And the X in the equations uh, is typically between 0 and 1. When metallic lithium is used, the lithium ions are separated at the anode and when then we go for the charging reaction, the process of the electrodes just occur in the opposite direction. What do we need to do to achieve high energy densities that we specially need for mobile application? So to achieve high energy densities, one requires a high voltage and a high number of ions that can be intercalated and that results in a high capacity. To achieve the highest cell voltage possible, the positive electrode active materials redox pair must have the highest possible standard potential in comparison to the negative electrode. The following criteria determine an active materials effectiveness in a lithium ion cell. So we need to look for high specific energy densities in a unit watt hour per kilogram, for example. We need a reversible and fast acting intercalation reaction, good electric and ionic conductivity, thermal stability, electrochemical stability, structural stability with the intercalation. 
mechanical stress caused by the volume change in the active material during lithium ion intercalation and deintercalation. And if this stress is excessive, it can cause individual fragments of the electrode material to separate and flake off. And this may damage then the cell irreparably. Similarly, lithium ion intercalation and deintercalation may lead to phase change in the active material. The choice of active materials must take into account material and production costs, natural reserves, environmental friendliness and toxicity. For example, cobalt is significantly rarer and more expensive than manganese or iron and ideally these materials then should therefore be used instead of cobalt. So, why should we not use lithium as a negative electrode material? That has certain advantages with a redox potential of 3.0 volt compared to the standard hydrogen electrode. Lithium has the most negative standard potential for all the materials suitable for the use as a negative electrode. And together with its very high specific capacity of theoretically around 3800 ampere hours per kilogram, these characteristics make lithium the ideal material for use as a negative electrode. So where's the problem? The metallic lithium electrode tend to form dendrites in rechargeable batteries. Dendrite formation means that tree-like or needle-shaped lithium structures are formed on the electrode surface when lithium ions separate from the electrolyte. And lithium ion separation results in capacity loss, reducing the service lifetime and cyclability of the cell. If the dendrites penetrate the separator, connecting the positive and the negative electrodes, then the cell short circuits. Another problem with the lithium is the high reactivity to water or residual moisture in the cell compounds. Here we see a list or a table of many different active materials. And what we can see here is that the maximum usable specific capacity ranges from 110 to 190 ampere hours per kilogram. The maximum usable voltages is limited to less than 4.5 volt versus lithium. Most commercially available cells use graphites or other carbon compounds as negative electrodes and the resulting mean cell voltage for the systems are therefore determined by the redox potential of the positive electrode minus an average potential of approximately 200 millivolt that of the graphite electrode. Here we see the discharge curve of a lithium ion cell. And the electrode potentials are shown relative to the redox potential of lithium, uh, show that at zero volt. Here as an example, we lose, use the lithium ferrine phosphate versus graphite cell design. During this charge, the lithium intercalation into the lithium ferrine phosphate, the positive electrode's potential decreases. Mean potential for this cell chemistry is around 3.4 volt. The negative electrode's potential gradually increases. In difference between the two curves at the electrons, that is then this red dot dotted line, determines the discharge curve. And there we see a mean cell voltage of around 3.2 volt. And also we see in this uh, green dotted lines the stability that is indicate, that indicates the potential range for commonly used liquid electrolytes. In this diagram we see discharge curves of several active materials of many different lithium ion cells. The maximum cell voltage is here achieved by the one using lithium with manganese around 3.9 volt. The lowest is achieved by the lithium in combination with nickel, manganese and cobalt versus lithium titanate at 
2.3 volt and the lithium nickel manganese cobalt system cell voltage con constantly decreases like other cell voltages and in contrary to that the lithium ferron phosphate system for example has a plateau like curve with a constant cell voltage range so uh, and in the next video we will look what is in between the two electrodes so we will look then for the electrolytes thank you very much see you later